Deputy Mayor Ed Barr. I'll be running the meeting. The Mayor Palumbo is out of town. And in, uh, to address the open public meetings statement, in compliance with the open public meetings law, I wish to state that on April 21st, 2017, the notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel Ledger, the Herald Times, and filed with the Township Clerk. <coughs> Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up until the closed session portion of this meeting and will be available on Upper Township TV channel 97 and on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement be made as part of the minutes of this meeting. So I'd like everybody to stand, salute the flag. <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Joanne, would you like to call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Here. Mr. Fabius? Here. Mr. Corson? Present. Mr. Young? Here. Mayor Palumbo is absent. Okay, I'd like to have a motion of approval of the minutes of March 27th. 2017 regular meeting and closed session minutes. So moved. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. And also the minutes of April 10th, 2017 regular meeting and closed session minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Okay, we'll start with the reports of the governing body. Joanne, you have anything to report? I have anything. Okay, thank you. I think at this time we have uh, 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 item for closed session contract negotiation and first contract. Okay, thank you. Paul? Uh, thank you. Uh, just want to report the paving project is uh, moving along pretty uh, rapidly for the first part of it. They completed about a third of the project of some of the streets within the township. We're now uh, going to slow down a little bit because the remaining streets have a concrete curb and driveway work to be done on them so it'll kind of slow the process down and it'll probably take the next couple months uh, to uh, work out the rest of the project but uh, the streets that they've been working on have been all been you know, completed satisfactorily and they'll be progressing through the township. Um, just also wanted to let you know we did get some of the, the next set of the final paperwork for the county grant uh, award for the uh, bike pedestrian Project at Harbor Road, so that you know, that formal paperwork once that is endorsed goes back to the county. <coughs> uh, and then once that's done, we'll get a final notice of award so we can really start working on the project. I understand that's a half a million dollar award. Yes, it is. Uh, any any more on the uh, boat ramp? What's going on? Um, we did the uh, final course of paving. On that project last week, we're just waiting for the uh, um, the right planning season. Uh, my understanding is I think it's another two weeks at least before the plants are ready to be uh, cultivated from the nursery, so that they can come down and be planted in the uh, uh, the transition area for the living shoreline. And uh, I've talked to the uh, um, the contractor is going to be doing the finishing the surfacing on the ramp itself. Scheduling with the material, so you might have to change one of the colors of the material type, but it, it, hoping to get that done over the next two, three weeks. Okay. See that we have the uh, curbs and crosswalks were put in? Okay. Yeah, the county, nice. pro the county project is kind of all completed. They finished the final uh, project there for the paving of the Commonwealth Avenue. They've got all the crosswalks painted. I know Public Works is getting ready to, uh, you know, they're kind of waiting for the county project to be done so we know where their limits of their painting and stuff and my understanding is public works over the next couple of weeks will be out there to uh, paint up the rest of the uh, no parking and areas within Strathmere. area. And then we're going to replace some street signs that have to be replaced? Yes. Okay. Any uh, update on the bulkhead permit change for the ground? I have not heard. You know, it's still, we're still in their technical review. Um, actually, I have to give a call. Usually they, they notify us of the whether or not it's moved from their administrative completeness to the um, technical review period, but I have not heard from them yet on that. And that's all I had this evening. Okay, Barb. I have nothing to see. 
Scott? I have nothing, sir. Well, yeah. this, is un this, is, this is unbelievable. <laughs> Are we on candy cam? one. <laughs> go ahead, John. I'm going to make it a hat trick. Nothing for me either. Hat trick, all right. All right, we're not going to get past Toby. Everything's good right now. This thing is great. There you go. <laughs> How about you, Kurt? I got a long list here today. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing at this time. Nothing at this time, but I do have one announcement. And we're going to need a motion that uh, we need to uh, move our meeting on uh, the, the 22nd of May, 522, to the Tuesday, 530. Is it uh, any conflict with anybody else? We had some conflicts with that. Do I have a motion to be able to move it? Motion so move. 530? Yes. Tuesday. That's May 30th. May 30th. 30. May 30th. <laughs> May 30th. <laughs> so, so we're moving it to right? <laughs> from May 22nd to May 30th. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's a Tuesday night, the mm -hmm. day after. No, five four, four, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then also, you are cordially invited to attend the Upper Township National Day of Prayer ceremony, which will be held Thursday, May 4th at 10 a.m. here in the municipal building. For those of you who would like to come and uh, participate. And that's all I have for tonight. And I guess we'll jump right into the resolutions. Uh, you got to vote on the motion, right? Did you vote on the motion? Oh, you got to vote on the motion. Changing the meaning. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> Move the resolution. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. Number two, appoint the 2017 season vote ramp attendance. Uh, motion to appoint the attendance. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. Number three, authorizing the award of a contract with CBW government for information technology equipment. Motion to authorize. Second. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. Number four, authorizing the Township of Upper to enter into contract with Cape Regional Health System to provide pre-employment physical examinations. Move the resolution. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. Five, authorizing the award of a professional services contract with Dr. Stuart C. Farrell of the Coastal Research Center at Stockton University for shoreline monitoring and consulting services for beach-related issues. Move the resolution. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. Number six, appointing Norman W. Briggs to act as special legal counsel. Motion to appoint. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. Number seven, authorizing the execution of a contract with Adams, Riemann, and Hagen Associates for the maintenance and conversion of the official tax map to a geo-reference digital format. Motion to authorize. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. Number eight, special premium account refund. Uh, Barbara, can we have some detail on this, please? Um, this is coming from the tax collector's office. Um, I'm not sure of the detail. Dan, are you familiar with the detail uh, on this? I can tell you. Uh, there was a reporting fee that was uh, excluded from the redemption amount. Uh, uh, and uh, because of that, the lien holder is entitled to reporting fee through dis disbursement. So in order for her to disperse it back to them, you need to we authorize it. Uh, motion to authorize. Yeah. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion <coughs> carried. Number nine, authorizing a contract with J.A. Montgomery Risk Control for right to know inventory and survey preparation services. Move the resolution. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. Urging the Cape May County Open Space and Farmland Preservation Board to consider acquiring Lot 451, Lot 19, and agreeing to enter into a maintenance agreement subject to certain conditions. Move the resolution. 
Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. 11. Accepting the annual stormwater report and certification and authorizing the township engineer to electronically sign and submit it to the NJDT pursuant to stormwater rules. Move the resolution. Second. Paul, Paul may want to report on this. Paul? Yeah, I, need to, I do need to report on this. This is um, an annual thing that we do every year to give a report to the committee on the different stormwater activities that we do throughout the township. Um, I'm sure as you read through it, you can see all the different activities that we have to do to make sure that, you know, that it's really to, to reduce non-point source pollution throughout the township. And these are the different measures that we do, like, you know, we uh, sweep, we swept over a thousand miles of township roads, uh, collecting some 151 cubic yards of materials off the street. You know, we have to clean and inspect each of our drainage uh, inlets and outfalls. We also do inspections at our outfalls after heavy rains and during dry weather to make sure they're operating effectively. Uh, there's also a large program where, you know, when we do paving projects or new developments, we have an inspection program where we make sure that they're constructed in compliance. And then we also are just starting to do inspections of privately owned basins to make sure that they're being maintained and operated. And if they're not, we have to send out a township notice, a notice to those to those property owners. Uh, there's also different ordinance requirements uh, for different uh, operations and standard operation procedures that the public works has to do for de-icing storage, you know, material storage, and vehicle maintenance, and the different things. Um, why do I have to go through this long little ditty about what we do for stormwater? Well, this is part of our public outreach that we have to do every year. We get, we have to accumulate a certain amount of points. Uh, so, you know, I go to the different you know, public meetings, you know, and try to teach people and talk about stormwater and, and outreach. We have different display material here at the township. We also send, you know, notices to, and tax bills and other documents. Uh, we also have to send, with all of our dog license renewals, there's a flyer about, you know, <coughs> pet waste that you, you know, that you know, people don't think about all the different things that could potentially uh, reach the stormwater and surface waters as pollution, but pet waste and feeding uh, wild birds and animals is another way, you know, another source of pollution that we all have to think about. So part of the point system is having a township committee informed and knowledgeable about all the different things that we do. So this is kind of a, a summary of that type of operation. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. But our public works does a good job at keeping up with all the activities that we're required to do throughout the year. All right. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> Number 12, authorizing a contract with CASA Payroll Services of Pleasantville, New Jersey for payroll services. Motion to authorize. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. Designating certain Strathmere Beach areas in the township of Upper as a surfing beach and a catamaran sailboat beach for the 2017 summer season. Move the resolution. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? <coughs> yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion carried. Number 14, authorizing the purchase of certain items from the 2016 Capital Improvement Bond Ordinance in the amount of $25,367. I'll make a motion to authorize. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion's carried. Um, what vehicle was that? That was for uh, was for uh, was to replace the engineer's vehicle. Okay. Has. Okay. Brings us down to item 15. Under discussion, Jenny rules, rules, Ta rules and regulations. The moment everybody's been waiting for. Dan, did you want to open well, it up? Uh, or? Since last meeting, we sent out a, a rough draft. It's, it's going to have some additional language in it, uh, but the substance of it uh, essentially set forth. Stops and and uh, uh, fees for the jitneys. Um, we did receive feedback feedback um, because of the uh, arrangement last year. I think the jitneys went to about 1:30 at the restaurants when they stopped. Uh, and they were running just for the 
restaurants. We did add a uh, request uh, of some of the Stratford residents uh, stops in Royal Beach this time. So there will be a couple of restaurant stops uh, as proposed here, and then uh, a couple or a few uh, Royal Beach stops. Um, uh, there was a request and there was feedback from residents that there's a concern for safety. Uh, if you stop it uh, two hours before the Seattle City Jitney stop, and also the fact that their restaurants were open later, um, and it, it could be a safety issue. And that if, we're, uh, if it worked last year at 1.30, it should work at 4 o'clock if necessary, and it's a balancing thing, you should do for safety. So that's something that I think the Township Committee should consider given the feedback that was given. Yeah, that's all the correspondence that we got from citizens. Uh, other than that, it's just a discussion item, and any direction you want to give us. So we want to be able to restrict them to the operational Commonwealth and whatever the and at least one said. one well, street. Will to Willard Avenue and Commonwealth Avenue. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, anybody else have any comments about this? We're also proposing to at the stops look at possibly putting the heavy public works and salt signage okay. to identify the stops just so that um, you know it's, it's very obvious of where those locations are, just in case you know a resident is not familiar with the area, they'll be able to see the sign. And I do, we did address the issue as far as Whale Beach. Whale yes. Beach is, is, a, yes. is a stop. There's actually three stops. Okay. One of the uh, issues that I saw in one of the emails was regarding idling. Yes. Um, if the Jitneys are able to switch to CNG vehicles, then idling is, is not as much of an issue because obviously the, the motors run considerably quieter. Uh, currently, I don't believe there's fuel in the county for compressed natural gas vehicles. If they are using diesels, there is a state statute for diesel idling. Perhaps what we could do is at the stops where the uh, Jitney may be waiting for you know, restarting this trip or, or whatever whatever they're doing there, uh, we post a copy of the state ordinance or the state uh, requirement. If, if I may interject, John. Um, our ordinance and my understanding of the themselves are all uh, compressed natural gas. So okay. the, the, the regulations I was talking about with Paul Baddett will cover them. And I, I'm going to speak for the, the folks in Stratford here, but before the meeting, uh, if the idling was a concern on side streets, where not when they were stopped at a stop. Okay. Um, uh, and we're going to address that by having rules, and it's going to be prohibited. So. Mm -hmm. Could there be a time limit set for them to be at each stop? I don't think you should if, if they're going to pick up passengers and well, it's I mean, a convenience type thing. I would think uh, if they're, if they're running the jitneys. Yeah, they're running other towns. I know. I, I guess if, if we're running one or two jitneys, I'm not sure what's going to run. Well, it's up to them how many they run. They, but they, they're not going to sit there for 15, 20 minutes and have somebody waiting at a stop 10 blocks away. So that, that could happen. From my understanding is that's the service that they have and that's what they they do. Now, whether they do that in practice or not, I don't know. Okay. Um, but obviously, you have to have a certain number of riders before it's economically viable. And my understanding is it's still supported by private businesses that will also be permitted in the final resolution that it can be financially supported by the civic associations or private individuals uh, or, or, or business organizations. And it is financially supported because, it, frankly, we don't have enough ridership in Stratford supported at reasonable rates. It has to be supported economically by outsiders. <coughs> so if you start limiting it, you make it even less I mean, economically viable. I'm, I'm completely for it as far as the jitneys. Uh, my concern, again, is if, some, if, there, if they sit for 15, 20 minutes to a half an hour waiting for somebody at that stop and there's 20 people to stop down the road. I, I'm not sure if they're with I, I don't run Jitney's, I don't know, but it seemed to have worked last year, and that was not a complaint that we heard of. Okay. Now, my question is, when the Jitney stops going north through Strathmere, they're obviously stopping. Then when they pick somebody up and they turn around, and, will they stop at all the stops again going south? Yes. So mm -hmm. if you, theoretically, you can actually hop the Jitney from one end of Strathmere to the other. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they have to pick you up on the side of the street that they're going the direction. 
and they move pretty quick. I mean, they yeah, they want fares. They want fares. They want to get back down in the sea aisle to get fares. So I mean, they're they're not gonna they're not gonna hang out. Run similar with more stops and more provision route to what happened last year. As long as you're moving, there should be no issue with idling. That's that's true. The idea is to keep people who have been out of restaurants from having to drive. I'd like to see it come off short of the mainland of the campgrounds, to be honest with you, but that's... There have some discussions, but again, <laughs> it's got to be economic and viable for the operators. My understanding is right. the operators are all independent, uh, that each operator <coughs> owns their own jitney. Uh, we'll see that when the licenses come in, but that's what I've been told from other towns. Um, so they're individual entrepreneurs. Right. And my understanding also is that it's up and down the coast, I think, out on Stone Harbor and maybe even... Any other comments? Do we have the, the, you, the you, if you wanted to, you could open it in case I know there are some distracted people here or before before you make a motion, you could open it for the limited purpose of this uh, item. Uh, otherwise, you know, you could, if you make a motion and then you have public comment exactly. later, you mm -hmm. may want to change the motion based on the public comment. All right, so we'll, we'll open it up to the public. Anybody that has anything to say, by all means, there's the podium, name. Social security number, rank serial number, the whole thing. No, the social security number. On the Jitney issue, right? Yes, right. on the Jitney issue. At this time, anybody want to make a comment? <coughs> well, uh, I'll comment. Uh, sure. I, from what I saw, the, you know, the, our proposed ordinance has a two o'clock time limit on it. I think we should be consistent with other neighboring municipalities. Um, they seem to run till four. No, I agree with you. I said for a matter of public safety and continuity. I mean, uh, if you're going to, if everybody's going to be operating. If, if you agree with what was proposed, accept that item, I would ask that you give a motion and a second vote to direct us to prepare the okay. final resolution based on the discussion and changing it to the 4, four o'clock time frame. I will make that the final motion. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Yes. I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated into the full minutes of this meeting. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. And there are reports from municipal departments on the township website motion to accept those reports so moved. second call the roll <coughs> there aren't any reports all right there's no reports there we go and we'll move down to public comment we'll give it another go around <coughs> this time we open it up to public comment your name and your address please karen mitchell 21 williams avenue strathmere which beaches were you designating as the surfing beaches this year? Do you have the list, Paul? Yeah. They are the same ones. The surfing beaches, Vincent Avenue and Sherman Avenue. They're the same. They've been the same as the location probably the last four or five years. And the Tamarind beaches between Hawthorne and Town. Hawthorne is where the Right, right. Okay, and the surfing beaches are going to be the non guarded beaches again? Surf fishing beaches. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Linda Bateman, 14 East Tecumseh, Strathmere. I am speaking now as president of the Strathmere Improvement Association. I'm sorry Mayor Palumbo isn't here tonight because he and I have corresponded about what I'm going to talk about. Um, but last year, if you've been in town, you've noticed our water tower. And it's filthy. It's moldy on the outside. Um, 
by the way, the Upper Township letters are not looking real good on it, and the grounds are not well kept. We've had complaints from neighbors, and at the last meeting, um, I noticed that you were um, going to be in contact with the local business because they weren't maintaining their property. I'd like to know why we can't do the same thing for New Jersey American Water and ask them to maintain that property. It's the first thing you see when you come over the bridge is the giant water tower that's covered with black mold, dirt, I don't know what it is, and they don't seem to be interested in being very good neighbors. Um, this was something the mayor and I had corresponded about last summer, and his answer to me was that he was waiting for a reply from the water company. So I'm asking you all if you'll take a look at it, if there isn't something you can do to move this forward, because it really is an eyesore. Paul, is there anything you think we could do? Yeah, I, I had contacted, I think uh, Bateman had con you know, brought this up maybe about a year ago. Almost. At least. And, and, and you know, did have some correspondence with <coughs> the American, and they kind of said, we'll look at it, but it wasn't really in their cycle for repainting. Can they, can they, they can clean it, they don't have to paint it. And there again, I don't remember how we left it with New Jersey American. How would it fall under our zoning violations? Uh, depends on what the site plan approval was for it. If it required certain standards, then it, it would be a site plan violation. Well, I gotta believe we put- rises to the level of a lack of maintenance and, and, and a public nuisance, I, I don't know. I'd have to really look into it further. But those are, the, those are some things that perhaps could be suggested as to potential problems to the water company and you correspondence Paul and say we don't want to have to go down the road will. and perhaps they can do something to clean mm -hmm. it up. I'll revisit the issue please with New Jersey America. Thank you. And okay. we'll let you know what happens. Thank you. Anyone else? Public comment just on the strapping or no, no, anything. No. Whatever you want to talk about. Kevin Greaves. I reside at 310 Perry Road in Petersburg. And uh, uh, a couple of you know what I'm here for. Uh, this has been a, uh, an ongoing problem of dirt bikes and quads in the George Harms Company quarry behind my house, which acts as a amphitheater through my kitchen, through my living room, and through the entire house. For the past 12 years, we have been living with this. We have been in contact with uh, the, the Woodbine State Police Barracks. We have been in contact with Upper Township. And just to give you a slice of April, okay? On <coughs> April 5th, there was one bike at 5.20 p.m. On April 7th, there was one bike and two people fishing at 6.21 p.m. Um, and 4.9, this is all 17, at 4.30 p.m., two quads running through the edge of the water and up onto my property. I'm sorry, and this started on 4.4 with my phone call to Sam Hund with the George Harms, Harms Company. I left a voice message at 1.46 p.m. Sam called me back at 4 p.m. to say that they have a guard stopping by once in a while and that he gives me his blessing to run the kids out of there myself. That is not my job. It is the George Harms Company to take responsibility of their property. Um, at that same day, two more dirt bikes came at in the quarry between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. And that was on 4-4, then I told you about 4-5, 4-7, 4-9, and then on 4-16, on Easter Sunday, as my family and I were having dinner, at 5 p.m., two bikes were running through the quarry, up and down the hills. If any of you don't know this quarry, it, it's, uh, I think they call it One Mile Hill, the locals do, because it's a huge, huge sand mount. 
along with a bunch of other ones, which makes it pretty much an a entertainment place. center for, for dirt bikes and quads. Again, I am the only house that is, not the only house that hears it, but I'm the closest to the quarry, and it, it, the way the, 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 the uh, quarry was excavated, the sound is, just resonates through our house. I can hear two of these people talking from over 300 yards away. In my, when I'm standing on my porch, as if they were standing next to me. So I called the state police at 5:10 p.m. No action. Called the state police again at 5:30. They said they were on their way. Called again at 5:50 to say that now they have left the quarry and now they're into Amanda's Field. They're not really in Amanda's Field. They're in the Upper Township laydown area that sits next to Amanda's, or next in between Amanda's Field and the quarry, which is another place to ride, which is now Upper Township's responsibility. Uh, through the years, uh, uh, the township clerk, uh, Mr. Coggins, and uh, um, Hobie, I forget his name. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, you guys have gotten uh, a, a lock put on the gate. That's great. It, it, it's, it's, it's a move forward, but the gate doesn't stop a dirt bike. Uh, they just go around, and there's, um, it's a big problem. Um, uh, the police stopped by my house at 6.30 to say they didn't see anyone. Of course, the first phone call was at 5.10, so... Uh, granted, the, the state police have more important things to do. Uh, there's bad guys out there. These dirt bikes aren't bad guys, but they are uh, breaking the law. And in my eyes and my family's, this is a big deal. We can't take it no more. Um, 418, at 445, I had to call the state police again and said they would look into it. Didn't know what happened. At 421, one bike at 3.50 p.m., 3.50 p.m., and I did not call the police because um, it sounded like they were in the Upper Township laydown area, and I um, don't want to become the cat lady of Upper Township to the state police or to to you guys. We're, we're at our end completely. Please do something. Please talk to the George Farms Company. Mm -hmm. Do not renew their permits to quarry. Is, is this year their full second year? Yes. Do you, do you need, you'll get a, is he close enough to get a notice? Yep. Yes. You'll get yep. a notice. Uh, what we have is full licensing and every right. year. Right. So knows about this, I believe uh, he has been in... And it does. Yeah, one, the rest of them know. And, well, one doesn't quite cut it, but catching a couple. Right now, it seems to be two or three bikes that are the same bikes. I've, I, I've, I've, I'm going to take the next move and videotape them. It is not my job to go out there and chase them off. I won't be as courteous as the state trooper might be. 
So, um, and, and, and where we're, we're at is, is uh, uh, Lieutenant Pearson has been in uh, contact with the township clerk um, and they're trying to get something together to, to uh, alleviate this, but I I've been dealing with this for 12 years. I mean, it's, it's been an ongoing problem in the township, and it's not just the pits. It's like the, I'll give you an example of power lines. I have a power line that runs through my property. Right. Power lines are not owned by Atlantic City Electric. They have an easement. But everybody you stop, oh, this is the power lines the property. It's power line. No, it's not. It's my property. They have an easement. I put up gates and fences, and they tear them down. Right. And right. the only way I've been successful catching them is putting my kids on a four-wheeler, and they follow the people home, and they go to their home, and they knock on the door. <laughs> I will personally buy the Woodbine Barracks, two sets of quads. It would be money well spent <laughs> for them to take them in and, and, and catch these guys. Uh, I, it would, I would not have a problem with that. Um, the, 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 the problem is, first of all, the George Arms Company is violating the law by breaking the code of uh, federal regulations that I couldn't, I, I, I don't have it with me, but there is a list of violations they are breaking in the in CFR codes for uh, open mine pits. Um, we are, are, are on the fence about taking this to the legal status of this. We, 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 if that's what we have to do, every dollar I have will go to it. I, we have to put an end to it. Uh, I, I'm a taxpayer. I have right to privacy. I have right to peace and quiet. And we do not have it. And summer's upon us, and they're there. They're not going to be there tomorrow and Wednesday because it's rain and wind. For Friday but and Saturday. Thursday and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they'll be there. Guaranteed. Is there any way? We'll, well, there's a, is there any way? I guess through public works, if we can have them check our pit and see if there's. I've, I've had some discussions with uh, some of the supervisors of the public works um, about what why some of my recommendations do. I don't know if they've you know started implementing some of those recommendations. I'll, I'll meet with Scott this okay. morning to go over. I don't think I I let Mr. Morgan know what I conveyed to some of the super, other supervisors. So they're accessing through our property too. Yeah, there, there are some. Yes. And what happens is, is they're also destroying some of our fields too. I mean, actually, I, I, and I get that. What they do is they cut through uh, Sunset Acres, mm -hmm. at least at at, um, uh, at Amanda's field. They come up through Tuckahoe, through Sunset Acres, onto Amanda's field, and then through the different avenues into uh, Upper Township's laydown area. And you can see, any one of you go out to your own property, you will see the dirt bike tracks and the jumps and the, and the, and the, uh, the berms. And then they cut through there and go on to the quarry. It is uh, uh, pretty much, I would say, it, it, it would, might be unstoppable with the fence. There's two things that have to happen. One. The George Harms Company needs to remove the hills, which removes the lure. Okay, that is one way to, for them to take responsibility of this, because they're not doing anything with the quarry. If they were quarrying, it wouldn't be an issue, but it's just it's just there. Second, another avenue is to put a guard there, from sun up or noon to sundown, because they're rarely there before noon from noon to sundown so an eight hour shift 12 to 8 o'clock on a daily basis would stop it the only two uh, ways the federal government had problems with them down on the off 550 there and the, the way they rectified it is they actually used guardrail because guardrail is too hot the guardrail piece because you can't get under it and you can't get your quad over it but if just right. can still step over it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Guardrail seems to work real good. Yeah. 
Yeah. And what's it going to take? Is it going to take one of these kids to get hurt? Oh, yeah. And the parents suing George Hart's company or Upper Township? Even though this kid was at wrong? I, 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 we, we cannot take it anymore. Please, yeah, we implore you. Township. We yeah, implore you to do so. It's, it's a season now. I see the kids around, park. Yeah. Kids around yeah. their quads now. It's, it's been ongoing since I've been a kid here. And uh, I think, truthfully, right now, it's probably at one of the lowest amount of lights that I've seen around. And I know I've been out to pit years ago where there'd be 20, 30 lights out there. Right, right. Uh, you know, so we did kind of put a stop to that. And a lot of times they come in on the old California it happened about eight or ten years ago when it was at Anna Stream, I mean, I'm your area, mm -hmm. the township. And uh, I know one parent called me and she realized that their fight that they fought for their child was not legal. It wasn't written on private property that somebody had the authority. And uh, I think the state police followed along, and I think it was two to three thousand dollars worth of fines, and the third bike got sold. Yeah. Right, and, and, and impounded? The bike got impounded? What's that? The bike was impounded? Uh, no, the, the parents. <laughs> oh, okay. Parents okay. Parents. <laughs> Not somebody that was that violating the law and didn't want to risk thousands and thousands of Right, lives. right. I know. And, and uh, it, it <clears throat> received. Uh, that word gets out and it receives, but you got to catch that word. Yeah, I've, I've also asked you know, the recreation soccer program for every day on the weekends at a man's field. Uh, I know we caught a, a couple of them about two or three months ago going across the field. Flush. And uh, we called the state troopers, and they came out, and right away they nailed them and took their bikes from them. I'm not sure what happened beyond that. Right. Yeah, that's the only presence we have out there right now on the weekends is our recreation people. They're, you know, they're coaching sports. Well, it's, 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 it's not Upper Township's responsibility right. to police the George Hunt Harms Company property. And uh, it is your responsibility to police the laydown area you have there and Amanda's Field and Sunset Acres again Sunset Acres comes back to the state police and um, uh, my gosh uh, the we, biggest problem is and I'm not trying to I don't want to throw people under the bus but uh, people live in a subdivision they own a one acre building lot and, they, and their kid gets decided to buy their child a motorcycle or a four-wheeler right well, they're not riding circles on my property. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's got to be some responsibility on the parents. Too. Exactly. Right. So maybe, <laughs> maybe the township can put out a article in our free paper or the Sentinel that asks the public, if you know who these kids are, or adults, some of them are, are, are full-grown adults, that are riding these bikes put an article out to report them so the state police can go there to that house and at least check it out and once you can't unless you're you're caught you can't be <coughs> accused of it but the fact that if a state trooper went to that house and said hey is your bike uh, being ridden in this area there and there uh, would would that deter them I think it would from going back there again. And, and educating them on the penalties. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It, it, a move needs to be done. We cannot go through another summer of this. Please, please, please. And uh, that's what I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Motion to go into public into uh, closed session. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the township committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. The matters are contract negotiation for the animal cruelty investigator, also personnel. I also include in my motion the estimated time and the circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. 
It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussions will be made public if and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. Second. Overall? Mr. Farr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Carey? <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for attending tonight.